okay. Before I thank you for the organizing and invite me to speak here again, uh, I would thank the audience that is here after all these nice talks during the day. Anyhow, and so, I will talk about contracting lorries attractors and some statistical properties. And uh, uh, I would say that my interest is to understand the behavior of attractors of tree flows. Here, I will talk always on tree manifolds or tree flows, presenting equilibria accumulated by regular trajectories in the sense that Adriana just talked before. And uh, the main example is the geometric Lorentz attractor, but it, it comes from the Lorentz equations, uh, no? And uh, the first case is the expanding geometric Lorentz attractor, and the second case is the contracting Lorentz attractor. And uh, I want to understand this kind of flows from the topological point of view, as well from the statistical point of view, okay? And then let's just recall once more these attractors, because I want to just to fix what is the important thing that I will consider afterwards. And then in the beginning, Lawrence uh, in 63 exhibit a three-dimensional uh, differential equations whose solutions seem to depend sensitively on the initial point. And the Lorentz equations, the famous ones, is, uh, he, he was a meteorologist. And uh, uh, I don't know. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Then uh, you see that the Lorentz equation is quite simple, a two degree polynomial equations and depending on the, the, this here that I put in color are fixed parameters and colored the classical parameters because that was the one we studied by Lawrence. And uh, uh, although the equation were so simple, he could not give the explicit solution for these uh, equations and so, and, but he, the famous, and the, uh, studying this from the numerical point of view, he conjectured that the, 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 flow, the flow generated by this vector field should contain uh, a volume zero attractor that is sensitive with respect to initial data. This means that if you take any two points and you iterate by the flow, after some time, they separated. And uh, this is the famous butterfly shape of this attractor. And uh, in, we are interested in just see what is going on with this uh, attractor. And indeed, the solution for Lawrence conjecture was uh, given by Tucker at the year 2000 under the advisor of Carlson. And uh, he combined this normal form techniques nearby the equilibria together with uh, computer assistance techniques far from the singularity, okay? And uh, meanwhile, because there, there is a big gap between the so real, the solution and when this kind of problem appears to the mathemat mathematicians. And then meanwhile, it was introduced a geometric model for this attractor that satisfies all the predictions by Lorentz that we presented, or we presented very briefly in the second, okay? And then, that was introduced by Guggenheim at the same time in the West by uh, Guggenheim and Williams, and in the East by Aframovich, uh, Bikoff, and Shunikov. And uh, the model is like this. You have, this is the, a singularity, a hyperbolic singularity and the, the, the um, the index of this singularity here is 
two and uh, is hyperbolic and you have a cross section here for the flow. And uh, um, how you do this? You just put uh, a linear flow in this part with this kind of eigenvalues and you complete the pictures like that just uh, composing by a rotation, translation, and expand somewhere, but it's possible to, to realize this picture as a vector field in R3, and the saturation of this uh, flow and the intersection of all of them is what is the uh, geometric Lorentz attractor, okay? And uh, the important thing, the hypothesis, the most important hypothesis to construct this, such a kind of example was the existence, well, first, okay, first, uh, uh, this singularity here, why is this is the usual Lorentz attractor? Because it, we call expanding Lorentz attractor because the eigenvalues uh, at the singularity satisfy this condition here. And uh, this is important in what I will uh, tell you next. And uh, the most important hypothesis was the uh, existence of a stay, uh, foliation here preserved by the Poincare map uh, associated to the to the model, okay? You know that uh, here you have the cross section and then you have a foliation here that you, it's clear that if you start with a linear flow here, the, uh, this foliation is preserved because you are just doing a linear flow. But if you do like that, you have to impose the condition that it's preserved, okay? and. Uh, so what you see is that the map here in this cross section, the Poincare map is like this. Just you have one side, this comes in a triangle like this, is a cusp triangle. And here also the other side. And the foliation is preserved. And once you have this, you have a one dimensional map associated, just projecting this, the quotient map through this foliation, you have a one-dimensional map associated. And uh, since the eigenvalues uh, here satisfies this condition, you have that the shape of this quotient map is like this, is just uh, a, a, an expanding map with just one singularity, and uh, we, can, we assume that the derivative everywhere, but not at zero, is bigger than the square root of uh, two. And uh, this map has all the nice properties that we should get from to the Lorentz attract, in the sense that once you, we have this, the properties of F implies the Lorentz conjecture in this case, okay? And, uh, okay, how you do this? You just notice that, uh, as I said, the F is increasing with the derivative B. And uh, here at zero to the left and to the right is infinite. And uh, this implies that the maximum invariant set for this one-dimensional map is a transitive attractor for one-dimensional map. And uh, again, you can push this property to the maximum invariant set to the two-dimensional map, the Poincare map. And then this is a transitive attractor for the Poincare map. And finally, this implies the conjecture by Lorentz, okay? The moral of this story is that once you have a map, a two dimension, you, you have a flow, you have a, a transversal cross section and a two dimensional map and a foliation that you preserved, 
you just projecting you from the all the properties from the one dimensional map you uh, recuperate you get you get the properties to the to the flow okay and uh, so um, the Lawrence like attractors, then it, it was just uh, Adriana I started talking about them. We were interested in this kind of flows and then we generalized it. This for uh, and the, the, the first results by Morales, myself and Pujols is that a robust transitive set, robust transitive sets for three flows are either hyperbolic or singular hyperbolic. And uh, the other theorem says that the robust transitive sets for three flows with equilibria are partially hyperbolic attractors or repellers. And the singular hyperbolic here means that it's partially hyperbolic with the central bundle expanding area. And uh, we call singular hyperbolic attractor is by definition what we denote Lorentz like attractor. Okay, and uh, the bundle here is like a, it's written here. It's just you have that everywhere in the attractor the bundle decomposes like this. This is a domain, you have this one is, which is uniformly contracting by the derivative of the flow, and this one is uh, dominated by the other one, but you don't have uh, uh, expand here, but you have a volume exp area expanding uh, in this sub-bundle, okay? And, uh, okay. From the statistical point of view, now we start studying this kind of uh, flows, we, what we get. We get that the, if uh, you have the Poincaré map associated and me, the SBR measure to a geometric Lorentz attractor expanding the one, then uh, the map has exponential decay of correlations. And this implies by some other results that indeed the, you have a log law for the heating time associated to the geometric, not flow, but attractor indeed, okay? What is the heating time? You know that uh, the heating time is just you fix one point here, you take a neighborhood, and you consider any other point, and for the first time that the orbits of this point intersects this uh, neighborhood. And uh, this is denoted the heating time, and uh, when you take the, the same point, it is always when you, you are considering you take this point, you are just uh, waiting for the orbit of this point to com come back to this neighborhood is the recurrence point. And uh, in that uh, formula here, you have the local dimension of this, the measure associated at this point. And, uh, okay, and then you have some uh, meaning for the some statistical property of the flow from this equation there. And uh, I, will, I would like to just to give a brief idea how we get this for expanding Lorentz attractor and uh, how are the steps. Okay, you, uh, the idea is to consider first the, the first return map or the Poincaré map associated to a cross-section. And uh, the first thing is, if you take the invariant measure, which is a physical measure for this map, then this system is exponentially mixing. Okay, this is the first result. And then, 
you prove that, in fact, this measure is exact. In other words, that the local dimension exists almost at every point. And then you, you prove that the, the, the law, the, this theorem here for points in, you prove the theorem for the points in the cross sections and uh, you just iterate this is a easy part because once you have this formula here for the two dimensional map, you just increase one because of the flow direction. Okay, and uh, these steps, what is the problem in these steps? The problem is indeed to prove, well, before, what is uh, decay of correlation? Uh, all of you already know what is uh, decay of correlation, but is this just uh, means that if you take any uh, the map and yeah, the two observables, what you have is that uh, this formula here that's equivalent to say that in the, from the topological point of view is that the, what you have is that the, uh, the measure is mixing somehow. No, here uh, it's, that's the difference. Here uh, we will talk in Lipschitz observables. Yes, this for this. Okay, and then the main difficulty in these uh, steps is just to prove the decay of correlation, exponential decay of correlations for the two dimensional map associated. And to prove this, we uh, take the, we consider this, the Weissenstein Kantorovich distance, which is defined like this. You just take two measures and you consider the soup of the difference of the moduli of the integral of the two maps, of the map considering one and the other measure, okay? And uh, here we talk just about Lipschitz um, maps on the manifold, okay? And uh, we try to, to study the decay of correlation in terms of this distance. And uh, then we try to, what we did was to relate the, this kind of uh, distance with decay. And then we have this distance, uh, the decay in function of the distance that if you have some measure which is absolutely continuous with your reference measure here, and this one is just the marginal, then you, this here is just the formula for the decay, okay, that I'm simplifying. This is just this, okay? This part here is what I call the, uh, that formula that is here. CN, GF is just the difference between the <coughs> iterates. And then you have this kind of relationship and then you study the, the distance in, func in function of decay and then you also have something here that the, the, this is the decay function and you relate it with the, the distance. And uh, finally, uh, you get this. This is the, if you back, uh, sorry, the pullback of the measure you relate with the decay. And finally, you relate with the, the disintegration and the proof of what I'm trying to tell you. You know that you have a two-dimensional uh, two map in the cross-section and you have a distance and then you try to relate uh, the, to obtain. And you know that in the beginning that indeed you can disintegrate the measure and then you try to compose the, how to get the, 
the theorem that the f is factually uh, is exponentially mixing just uh, combining the relation that you get between this distance between the two measures and the decay of correlations, okay? Okay, and uh, then um, let's go to the contracting Lorentz attractor, and then I would like to repeat, once I have the decay of correlations for the two um, dimensional map associated to the flow, I have the, uh, the log law for the heating time, and maybe I, we can have some other statistical properties for the, for the flow. And then I would like to repeat this for the contracting Lorentz attractor. And how is this? This is much similar to the expanding Lorentz attractor. And indeed, the difference is that the first one is that you just at the, the, the relation between the eigenvalues now is uh, bigger than zero and not on the contrary, okay? And uh, we also ask that this, uh, uh -huh, is replaced, uh, I have these conditions here by, that should uh, be such, uh, lambda two, one, and three are the eigenvalues and I have some conditions between them. And this is just to, this is the appearance of a computer thing, of the contracting Lorentz flow attractor. And we ask these conditions here because to, you have the, remember that I told you that the hypothesis there for the uh, expanding Lorentz attractor was the existence of a, a foliation, stable foliation in the cross section. Here, to guarantee the existence of such a foliation, and the, we need the, uh, uh, more differentiability to, to deal with this kind of problem, and that's why, and the one dimensional map associated this time is like this. The, here you have a a tangency, and the, that uh, relation that here is just about the order of the contact here at this discontinuity, and uh, we would like to repeat the uh, what we did for expanding Lor geometric Lorentz to this case, and. Um, just before we continue, let me just comment something in, the, in this attractor. And the first is that uh, this map is, is not stable because it is, uh, is accumulated by maps which have a periodic attracting orbits. And uh, no, in, on this attractor is not, uh, stable or robust in the, on, on opposite to the Lorentz, expanding Lorentz attractor because the expanding Lorentz attractor is robust, but this one is not robust in the sense that you perturb and then you don't have the same thing in the neighborhood. But you have a, a persistence in a measure theoretical point of view or sense, in the sense that if you perturb this family, Lorentz, con the contracting geometric Lorentz attractor, you, you show that there is a, a one parameter family of positive Lebesgue measure of C3 closed vector fields nearby the first one, such that the, the starting vector field has a transitive non hyperbolic attractor. Okay, although uh, this result says that if you take a family, then you find in, in the parameter space a uh, full measure set in the parameter corresponding to flows presenting uh, an attractor. 
okay? And, uh, okay, we would like to prove the same result in this case, and what is this, this problem, and we, go, we got this with Galatolo, Nizoli, and myself, and uh, the main point to get, uh, again, this property is to prove that the two-dimensional map associated to a contracting uh, Lorentz attractor, the two-dimensional Lorentz map, uh, has exponential decay of correlations. But um, unfortunately, and, uh, okay, once you have this, you have the, the log law, which is simple like that. It's the same. And uh, how is the strategy in this case? In this case, we try to follow the same steps, but we have to adapt. And then the main difficulty is, again, this, that I've already told. Why? Because the map here, the base, because the map now is a cross product, and the base map is not uh, expanding as before. And then we have to improve the arguments just to repeat the, the strategy. Okay, and what we do, we start, um, uh, the, the, idea. the main idea is, okay, I want to recover the properties that the base map has to the flow. Okay, and then now we, we take this, we recall the definition of convergence to equilibrium, which simple means that if you have a map and the uh, reference um, measure mu, and uh, we say that this map has exponential convergence to equilibrium, if, opa, if you, this holds here, the pullback by t of g, you, you notice that this is almost the, the formula of decay of correlations. But the difference is here you have one measure, and here is, you have one under the two, okay? And then we, what is this formula is saying is that just the pullback by the other one following one measure uh, converges to, to the other one, the difference, okay? Okay, and then just uh, uh, we give this definition here, like the, if this is a square and the f is some uh, integrable function, we denote this here is just the integral of f in uh, one fiber. And uh, we relate, um, this is a theorem telling us what we can get. This theorem is not, uh, it's, it's already proved uh, here. More or less, it was proved in my result with uh, the old paper with Galatolo. But the, the point is that if you have a, 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 measure, a skew product like this, such that the, this map here, that is the quotient map through a foliation, no? preserves a foliation, and the, this map has exponential decay of correlations with respect to some norm, to these norms here. T, T is non-singular with respect to Lebesgue. Piecewise continuous monotonic in the sense that you have a finite number of intervals such that the restriction of F F, uh, t, t is a homeomorphism onto its image. And the map G here is a, a contraction on the fibers. Okay, once you have this, you prove that the, the map itself has exponential conver convergence to equilibrium. 
with respect to the product measure here. Then you, you know that if you have a, nice, a skew product such that the base map has nice properties, you can prove that the skew product has exponential convergence to equilibrium. Okay? Once you have this, well, convergence in the equilibrium is the same as I said before, and once you have this, you get another result. Then uh, uh, the next result, okay, now I have a map that it has, um, okay, now the base has, this is the skew product, okay? And uh, the base map has exponential convergence to equilibrium, and uh, again, the base map is non-singular, with respect to Lebesgue measure, piecewise continuous and monotonic, and uh, you have a finite number of uh, intervals covering the interval, such that the, the T restricted to each interval is a homeomorphism on its image, and uh, the map is a uniform contraction on each vertical leaf. This means that this map here, G, is a contraction, okay? Then the map has exponential decay of correlations, okay? So we have two theorems here saying what we, we have to do with the skew product such that the base has exponential decay of correlations and another theorem is how to get from exponential convergence to equilibrium to exponential decay of correlation. Then you have to adapt these two uh, theorems just to apply these results in our case. And what is the difficult is to apply these results. You see that the, we have to, to work in another Banach space which is called the, uh, the maps with generalized bounded variation because this fits better in our case than the other one doesn't fit well. And uh, we have to extract the right properties from the base map, from the skew product that we are interested, which is the case of the contracting Lorentz uh, attractor. And this time, again, the base map is not piecewise increasing anymore. Then we have to work more on this. And the main technical problem is transform the information we have about the base map, in this case, in this space of the generalized the bounded variation, to uh, with respect to, oh, I am, excuse me. I have the main, the technical result is that I have to transform the exponential decay that we have with respect to Holder and L infinity observables into information about decay respect to generalized bounded variation observables. And finally, we observe that indeed the skew product associated to a contracting Lorentz attractor can be written as this. You have exactly this map here, preserves the vertical foliation. You see that the map is a contraction in the fibers, and the one dimensional map associated is piecewise C3, and here, that enters that case of uh, the relation, the extra relation between the eigenvalues. And, uh, okay, and you just put that one under less than one are pre-periodic repelling. And the one more condition is that this map here, again, because the relation that I mentioned in the beginning for this kind of attractor in the singularity, 
the map T has negative Schwarzschild derivative, and this is important to to deal with this kind of maps and to prove all the nice properties that this map have. And uh, the main theorem is uh, that a map satisfying those properties have uh, exponential decay of correlation with in this the Banach space of uh, generalized uh, bounded variation observables. Okay, and uh, okay, this implies that the F has exponential. Finally, we, we can transform all this in uh, Lipschitz observables, and this implies the log law for the heating time, and that's all.